Here we go. Dr. Umar, my name is Muel. I'm probably saying that wrong. I live in London, UK. And over here, I've noticed a lot of non-black people, such as white hipsters with dreadlocks, and would like to hear your opinion on that. What are your opinion on men having these types of hairstyles? Here's my answer. I don't like Europeans misappropriating African culture at all. At all. No non-African should be wearing non-African wearing African hairstyle, African dress, practicing African spirituality. I believe our culture is sacred. And because our culture is sacred, only African people should be participating in the culture. Now, if you want to dye your hair, put a bunch of earrings in your eyebrows, your nose, your lips, that's a personal preference. I would never date a woman who got all that going on. If you want to cover your body with tattoos, that's a personal preference. I would never date a woman who had that, all that going on. But at the end of the day, as a pan-African psychologist, at the end of the day, as a pan-African psychologist, my job is to understand how you think. I care about how you think and how you behave as it relates to African liberation. How you dress, how you eat, what God you pray to, what flag, what language, what religion, it doesn't matter. How do you think and behave on the line of African liberation? That is all I am worried about. Now, let's see. Good question, though, my brother. Very good question. Do you think blacks globally, wait a second, would you consider quadroons or someone with a less percentage as black? Do you think historically Africans have had the power to oppress another group? Ancient African society, before we fell from our great empire, excuse me, we had the ability to oppress, but we didn't. If you study traditional African culture and traditional African kingdoms in the ancient African world, we used our power to uplift the rest of the world. Africans civilized Europe. We built ancient Chinese civilization. We built ancient Indian civilization. We built ancient American civilization. We have always used our knowledge and power and resources to enrich the whole world. And that is why I believe. And that is why I believe that the only way the planet Earth will function the way that God intended is for the African man and woman to reclaim their royal position. And when I say reclaim your royal position, I'm not saying that every one of us was a descendant of a king and a queen because every one of us were not. When I say we need to reclaim our royal position, I'm talking about the fact that every African in the world contains the DNA of divine royalty, which is the almighty creator and sustainer of the universe. We are the only people whose DNA comes from the creator, and the creator is the absolute royal highness of the entire universe, and we are the children of that royal divine highness. So every African who is kissed of the sun, who has the blood of God, God within their veins are royalty. And that is the position I come from. And that is what I will teach at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. The European ruled the world and he did it with blood and oppression. The Arab ruled a part of the world and he did it with blood and oppression. The African is the only one to ever Rule the world with righteousness. I'm going to say it again. The African is the only one to ever rule the world with righteousness. Let me go with another. And as far as who's black and who's not, for the Garveyite, for the Pan-Africanist, if one of your parents is an African, you are an African. If one of your parents is an African, you are an African. 
but you must psychologically pledge allegiance to African people. If you do not psychologically pledge allegiance to African people, you can be blue, black, purple from Jamaica. You can be blue, black, purple from Nigeria. You can be blue, black, purple from Brazil. You can be blue, black, purple from Cuba or Puerto Rico. And if you do not pledge allegiance to African people, then I do not consider you to be an African, i.e. Kamala Harris, Barack Obama, Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, Clarence Thomas, Charles Barkley, Shaquille O'Neal, and I can name a whole bunch of Negroes who I don't consider to be part of the African family because of who they pledge allegiance to, which is the white power structure. My mom was born in Jamaica. I was born in the UK. My mother has always been proactive in teaching me about blackness, which has carried through. I'm constantly having to challenge these preconceived racist narratives I come across on daily. I'm sick of arguing with my own people over them defending what the white man and Arab has been doing. Our women need to stop wearing that fake hair. Our black men need to stop mixing outside the gene pool. Someone needs to stop bleaching our precious melanin, which nature has blessed us with. We need to run and own our own specialist foods and invest in our own community. Our women are buying fake hair and skin from Indian shops who disrespect us. I live in Lundy, London, Hackney, England. I think we were more unified when white people were getting away with their bias. Now it's like we have become passive and complacent, like everything is okay when our economic status and birthright clearly isn't so. Mom, okay, well said, my sister. Very well said. Very well said. Here's of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey who said, if the black man and woman are not careful, we will drink in all the poison of Western civilization and die from the effects of it. Marcus Garvey said, God never intended us to be a race without a nation of our own, an independent homeland, and we are not going to abuse God's confidence in us as men. Marcus Garvey was asked, are you African or are you Jamaican? Are you African or are you a Jamaican? And he said, I would never, ever give up a continent for an island. I am an African. Yesterday, today, and for all time.